Hey everyone. Okay, so um, I have a few minutes again. My boys are both taking um, their afternoon nap. So, just got done running. Sorry, I look like this. All haggard again. Um, just check to make sure they're still sleeping before I start this because it's kind of long. It's going to be the labor and delivery video. So, yeah, they're still sleeping. Um, okay, so... Labor and delivery of coal was kind of interesting. So, Tuesday of the week that I had him, uh, which would have been, I guess, the 20... Sorry, Cole's waking up. <laughs> of course, I start, as soon as I start the video. Um, so, Tuesday would have been the 27th, I think, which is when I had my appointment. Yeah, Tuesday the 27th of January. So, had my um, midwife appointment just a weekly check and I had to be seen by the OB instead because the midwives were all booked or something I don't know you know if you follow my videos then you know that it was kind of crazy towards the end with the midwives so um yeah I had to see the OB who I really really liked actually I wish I would have kind of went to him the whole time the only thing I didn't like with him was the fact that he pushed uh, for induction and midwives are more of um, natural kind of uh, childbirth. So, yeah, he wanted me to do the induction, and I was only going to be 40 weeks on the day I delivered my son. So, I've heard of women going to 42 weeks, so I don't understand why he was pushing for the induction. But he said, I mean, I was miserable, but I wasn't about to get induced if I didn't have to. I'm really scared of needles, like petrified of needles. I didn't even want to get the IV that I had to have, and yeah. So, <laughs> um, with my first son, if I didn't have to get the IV, I wouldn't have got that either, but I didn't get any pain meds with him either. Um, no epidural, no nothing, no Demerol or something, I think is what they said they could give you to take the edge off. So, um, yeah, nothing other than that. So, the OB said... If I wouldn't be induced, he could do the induction that week. Because I thought they only did them, for some reason, on Wednesdays and Saturdays or something. It was like some specific day. But he said they could do them any day. So he's like, you know, whatever day you want to get induced, you know, pretty much you, you don't have any reason to still be pregnant. You know, your child's going to, you know, he's pretty big and he's healthy. His lungs are fully functioning. Like there's absolutely, your placenta is going to start to die. So, um, you know, we can induce you whatever. And I was like... Uh, I was like, well, maybe we'll give him another week or something, and if he doesn't come by, you know, Monday, maybe do the induction then or something. So, um, they called before I even got home, and they were like, when do you want to schedule? It was just, it was ridiculous. I was like, I don't even know if I really want to, but they were like, well, let's just set something up just in case. So, to make them feel better and to make myself feel better, like there was an end actually in sight because I was so miserable, I set it up for, um... February 2nd, Monday, February 2nd, so I would have went in on Sunday night, they said, and taken something to make my cervix dilate, which was odd, because I already was three centimeters dilated when I went to my OB appointment that day, so um, they said they'd get, I think Cervidil is what they said they would insert, and then, and that was at 6 p.m. on Sunday night, and then on Monday morning, if nothing happened, they would start Pictosin at 7 or 8 a.m., so it was a... Uh, it made me feel better to have it scheduled and be like, okay, so I'll have him that day. If not, by then. But when I saw the OB, he said, um, basically I was three centimeters dilated and he thought that the baby was going to come any day. So <laughs> he was like, you know, pretty much we're waiting for him to come out, but he's, I can feel his head right there and you're three centimeters dilated. This is your second child and you know, any day. And he's like, I don't think you'll make it to next week. And I'm like, mm, okay, I've heard that before. So, you know, I wasn't really um, expecting anything. And that was Tuesday. So, went home that day. And I was like, eh, whatever, you know, um, normal day. So, um, and he did in the internal and everything. Of course, you know, you know, he knew that I was three centimeters dilated. So, um, pretty much went home, did our normal thing, ran, cleaned the house up. <laughs> I was like, just... You know, it, at that point, I was like, 
I've heard it before. You know, they've said he's going to come any day, any day, any day. You know, your second kid always comes sooner. So I wasn't really thinking anything of it. And then uh, the next day, Wednesday morning, we go to this play group um, at this arena near our house. I take my two-year-old there. So we, it's from 9 to 11 in the morning. So, of course, got up. And I was like, hmm, still pregnant. <laughs> you know, it was just pretty much whatever at that point. So... Um, got him ready. We went to the play date and they have a bouncy house there. They have like, you can play soccer. It's a whole bunch of little activities set up for toddlers. So, um, I was in the bouncy house with him and then, um, I don't, I think I played like in the fort with him a little bit and they had this like big parachute thing. And then my friend calls and she's like, really upset because her husband got um, a speeding ticket in another state and they had to go to court and he didn't know about it so they had a warrant out for his arrest and all this other stuff so she was really upset and I felt really bad for her and she's like I just need to get out and I'm so upset and he has to go deal with this can you um, come to the mall with us her and her toddler she, she's um, I think a month or two older than my son and he they're in love like they hold hands and you know they love each other so I was like, yeah, whatever. You know, we're at this play thing now, but we'll go. So, um, but the mall she wanted to go to was like 45 minutes away from where I was. We live pretty far from each other. So I was like, yeah, it'll take me a little bit, but I'll go. So I asked him if he wanted to see his little girlfriend. And he said yes. So we got in the car, headed down to the mall, walked around. She's like, let's walk this baby out. So just walking around and... It was weird. I started getting, like, contractions. It, even in the bouncy house at the playgroup, I started getting contractions. Like, a good one every hour. And that's how it started with my first son. Um, my first son, I woke up the morning I lost my mucus plug, and I had um, a pretty big contraction every hour. And um, that night, I felt like a pop and a gush. It wasn't my water breaking from what they say, but that's what I felt. And then... All through the night I labored, and the next day went to the hospital in the morning and had him at 4.30 that afternoon. So, anyway, back to the story. I was having a good contraction every hour. Didn't think anything of it. I was like, it's probably because I was in the bouncy house. It's probably because I'm so close to the end and I'm miserable. It's probably because I wasn't drinking a lot of water that day. Like, I just was not in the mindset that I could go into labor. So, um, we went to the mall, walked around with her. Got some lunch from Chick-fil-A, and then my mom calls, and she's like, can you get me something, and, you know, want to come have lunch with me? So, she works at a dentist office, like, ten minutes away from there. So, I was like, all right, we'll go see Grandma. So, got him in the car, got her lunch, took her lunch, we went and ate lunch with her, and still having the contractions at that point, point. I'm just like, I'm really tired. I was like, I just want to go home and lay down. So, by this point, it was like two o'clock in the afternoon. It was his nap time anyway, so I was like, let's go. He slept in the car on the way home, and then he slept for, like, two more hours when we got home, and I went for a little run. I went, and usually I do, like, six or seven miles, and, um, I did, like, four. I was just beat, but it was really weird because I felt the need to clean everything. So, I was just cleaning, like, literally everything. I was scrubbing the floors, every piece of furniture. I was pledging down, like, the legs, the front, the back, everything. It was... All the windows were Windex, like the, the fans, I dusted all the fans and the blinds, like nothing was left untouched. I cleaned the trash cans out. It was weird. <laughs> like I was wiping down door handles. It was, it was weird. So, um, you know, I'm not normally like that. I mean, I'm a clean freak. I'm not that much of a clean freak. Anyway, wiped down everything and then I was like out. I was like, oh my god, like I just realized what I had done that day. <laughs> it's like we've been non-stop since we woke up in the morning and especially me, I'm exhausted. I didn't even get a nap. I was done. So my husband gets home and I was like still having the contractions every hour and I'm like, I was like, these, are, I was like, these Braxton Hicks are so annoying. And he's like, well, are you sure they're Braxton Hicks? I'm like, yeah, pretty sure. So, um, yeah, so he had to go to Philadelphia the next day for work. And, I mean, it's a pretty good distance from our house. He travels to work a lot. So, in the morning, um, all through the night, I was having these contractions. And at midnight, like 1230, I, one woke me up out of my sleep. And I was just like, oh my god, it's uncomfortable. And I went out. We have a pellet stove. I went out and sat by the pellet stove pretty much all night. 
And, I mean, I couldn't, I wasn't really sleeping at that point anyway. I was up every hour peeing and everything else. So, the glories of pregnancy. So, I went out there and I kind of just stood by the fire all night and started timing the contractions. Because I'm like, they're kind of getting close together. Um, so, timed them on my phone and they were coming every like five minutes apart. And by this point, I think it was like three or four in the morning. I was like, I'm going to take a bath. I just really want a bath. So, I took a bath and they weren't going away. So, my husband got up at like 5.30, 6 o'clock. My son woke up with him, you know, like 5, 6.30. And I'm out there in the living room by the stove. And I'm just like, ugh. It's like they're really coming on strong now. And they're coming like every five minutes. And he's, I was like, you know, why don't you just go to work. And then by the time you get home, which is around 3 or 4, um, we'll see what happens. You know, I'm sure nothing's going to happen by then. I'm probably just going to labor all day like I did with my son. And it'll be fine. So I was like, just go to work, and when you get home, we'll figure out what we're doing. And if I need you, I'll call you. And he was like, no. He's like, your contractions are five minutes apart. Like, that's not okay. I'm not going to be, like, hours away from you. So he stayed home that day, he called out. And he's like, you probably called out for nothing. This is so stupid. And I, I was kind of, like, mad at him. And then, um, God, it was... I ate breakfast because I'm like, I am stuffing my face if I have to go to the hospital. They don't let you eat anything because if you need a C-section, you can't eat. So I was like, I'm stuffing my face now. Like, they're not going to let me eat. I got I got to clean the house. I got all this stuff to do. He's like, no, no, no. We need to go to the hospital. If they're five minutes apart, you know, and getting closer, we need to go. And we had to drop off our son and all this other stuff. And I was like, yeah, you got a point. So let's just go to my mom's. I called my mom. She took off work that day too. And she was like, okay, you know, I'm going to call out and I'm going to take, um, my son Chase, and we're just, you know, she's like, you can stay here for a little bit and labor if you want until they get, like, closer together, and then you can go, because she's, like, 10 minutes from the hospital. So, we went over there, and he was playing with his cars, and I was just, like, kind of walking around the house, eating, nibbling on things. I remember I was eating, like, crackers and ricotta cheese. It was really weird. And coffee. Ugh. So, um, I was just walking around and laboring, and they were getting closer together, like, I remember at a time they were like a minute apart and my husband was getting really mad and he's like, we better go to the hospital. Like they're one to three minutes apart and you need to call and all this other stuff. I was like, what do I need to call for? I'm in labor. Like, what, what are they going to tell me? You know? So it was just not good. Like we were all kind of on edge. And, um, so I called the hospital finally because they were all bitching at me to call. So I called. Uh, labor and delivery and I was like look my contractions are one to three minutes apart should I like come in I mean I can kind of handle this for a little while longer and they were like well did you call your midwives did you call your doctor I was like no they told me to call you and she's like no you need to call them so then I called them and left a message because I could never get through so they were like I can't believe you left a message you're in labor you need to get through you need to hit the emergency line I'm like no I don't so I left a message at like 10.30. I didn't get a call back until, it was like, it was like 12. And they called back and they're like, you're in labor still? And you haven't like come to the hospital? Did you call labor and delivery? I was like, yes, I called. And they told me to call you. And I've been waiting to hear back from you. And they're like, oh, that's really weird. I was like, oh my God, this is ridiculous. Like nobody knows what's going on. I was like, I'm better off by myself. So <laughs> I just kind of like, I kept walking around. I was like, I am so mad. I don't even want to go. Like I'd rather just have my kid at home. Anyway. Um, at that point, my husband was just really mad at me and really irritated and agitated. He just wanted to get there to make sure the baby was okay and that we didn't have a baby on the floor of my mother's house. So he was like, let's go. So, and they were pretty intense. I could barely make it to the car. I was like, oh, they're, they're kind of getting like closer together and more irritating. So we got in the car and took us about 10 minutes. We got to the hospital around 12, 31 o'clock. Um, they put me in the little triage room, did the contraction things, and then my the midwife who was delivering that day was the one that delivered my first son. And I loved her, and she's so sweet, and she's pretty much like she leaves you alone. I love that. She leaves you alone to let you labor and deliver how you want. She's very laid back. She's very, like, I tell her what I want, and she deals with, like, how, how nasty you can get in labor. And she's very, I love her. Love her. So, so happy. It's like the heavens opened up when I heard her name as the midwife that night. So, um, she came in and checked me and she's like, you are five centimeters dilated already. And she's like, in a few hours we're going to have a baby. So, she was like, let's get this stuff set up, get you into a room. 
get your IV in, get you antibiotics because you should be strep positive, and we'll have this baby out. And by then it was like 1.30 when I got to the room, and I had the birthing ball, and I'll make a separate video because it's like 15 minutes long, but um, I'll make a separate video, part two, to the delivery. Okay, bye.